Two heads are better than one. That's no, not good. And luckily he doesn't seem easily rattled. Today we're headed to the lands between breaking down and reacting to all of the jaw dropping medical scenes and gnarly injuries from the highly popular video game, Elden Ring. Let's dive right in. If you're holding on to something or you're continuously exposed to a flame, you're going to get probably second, third, and maybe even fourth degree burn. Just depends on how long you're exposed to the fire or whatever is burning you. Oh! I feel like sometimes when I have to reduce a fracture or put a dislocation back, it feels like I'm doing that same thing to somebody's leg. I'm just kidding. But sometimes you actually hear like bones crunch across the other bones and it makes a weird feeling in your hands and actually noise that people can hear. But I know I'm not this strong to be able to rip apart legs, but you do have to be careful. Some of our techniques that we use that you don't actually accidentally snap somebody's bone, which could happen when you're actually trying to fix it. Fix it, fix it. Ouch. We see people that come to the emergency department with partial amputations or complete amputations. There are different situations where we have to stabilize it if it's partially amputated versus if it's completely amputated, it's more like salvaging the rest of the limb and the body just to make sure you don't bleed out and die. Here, it's in flame. So one, it's being cauterized, so it's probably not going to be bleeding out. Oh, puncture wound, stab wound, right to the lower part of the abdomen. It was almost as low as where your bladder is. Once it gets below the umbilicus or the belly button, we don't actually call it the abdomen anymore. We pretty much call it the pelvis. So down in that area. What are we pulling out? A sword? Please don't swallow swords. I know we're pulling this out. What do I always say to everybody out there? Please don't pull it out. Get to the hospital ASAP because you could potentially do a lot of damage when you pull it out. If you actually do have a foreign body in your throat, you get worried about is it an airway problem? Is it an esophageal problem? It's probably both, obviously. When somebody comes in super sick and there's a lot of trauma to that area, we'll do a laryngoscopy take a look, and there's just blood everywhere. So we're suctioning the blood out so we can actually see. What is this thing? It almost looks all like blood vessels and arteries and probably some veins in there, hard to tell. They almost look like intestines, some creatures that are moving. Together we will devour the very God. <laughs> That was intense. Oh, wow. Massive amounts of puncture wounds. It looks like a tree. It looks like tree branches. They're a pain in the butt when somebody actually falls and hits these and gets them embedded in their skin and you're trying to get the stuff out. Puncture wound from the back causing multiple different types of trauma. So you can fracture your bones from this. You can impale organs and have major blood vessels injured. And then obviously you could get to the heart, but think about this. You have your rib cage, you got your spinal cord. We're talking about humans here. I'm a human. Just correlating it to humans. The amount of force that it takes to kind of puncture through those is pretty great. It needs to be high velocity. Oh my gosh, just demolished. We got some arterial blood splatter going on. It's just pouring out. Maybe it's not even arterial. It's just like a fountain of blood. Typically, if you maybe rupture your aorta or rip open the heart, there's a pour out like that. Ripping open the heart, it actually does happen. People have one of their ventricles or their atriums might actually get torn apart. You gotta tear me apart! Your heart's encased into your chest. The blood fills up into that chest and then it starts to compress down on the heart. Cool. Oh, rusty blade to the abdomen. Always worry about infection. You're making sure that somebody is not bleeding out. Now with that type of blade, you're probably going to hit some sort of intestine most likely. So you also worry about the fact that you're going to have poop, mainly E. coli, because that's in our poop. We have lots of bacteria, but that's the big main one. Oh, the bum, bum, bum. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> 
Well, that's almost like getting blasted with like an avalanche. Avalanches kill people. You can be buried alive, so to speak. And there's also rocks and earth. Besides just suffocating under the snow, you actually might get knocked out, traumatic brain injury, skull fracture, bleeding out, lots of different things. Cool. Slice that Achilles tendon. Has anybody ever had an Achilles tendon rupture? Let me know. If you cut your Achilles tendon, you're not able to actually push off because the, your gastrocnemius as well as your soleus, they kind of come down and form that nice heart-shaped muscle on your calf and the back of your leg. So when you actually try to push off, there's no attachment to it. So it's kind of just floppy there. I don't know if anybody has stepped on something sharp on the bottom of their foot. It freaking hurts. The skin on the bottom of your feet are very thick. And so when you actually step on stuff, it hurts a lot. But when I've had to like suture cuts to the bottom of the feet, like the skin is so thick, like putting the needle through, it actually takes a lot of effort. Wow, look how big that sword is. When they wielded these big, massive swords, like really difficult to swing around and use because of momentum and how heavy it is. Oh no! I don't know if you've ever been bitten by a snake. I've never been bitten by a snake, but I do treat people that are bitten by rattlesnakes. That's quite common in Southern California. And I've had to give the anti-venom multiple times for individuals who their blood starts acting abnormal. You gotta know in your area where you live, which snakes are ones to stay away from, how to identify them, where do they live commonly. Not every bite by even a venomous snake <laughs> contains the venom. Sometimes they do something called a dry bite unique skeleton. I don't even know what type of flying, whatever it is, it's missing half its skull. I've seen patients come in with their skulls missing and they're still alive. They typically don't do well, unfortunately. It just depends on the situation, what caused it, how much trauma there is, the underlying tissue. Is the body still alive? Is the patient not neurologically there? Are they neurologically there? Was it very isolated? Oh! <laughs> I've had patients come in where they have been injured by birds, where birds have pecked into them, so to speak, and caused major issues and major traumas through very specific organs of the body. And they get infected because it's just a mouth, just like human mouths or any animal mouth. They're a lot of bacteria. This was super cool, really great graphics, intense game. There's a lot of, you know, the red stuff flying around. Also, I made fast acting health supplements with you in mind. No matter what the issue, I got you covered. Check out Life Happens. You take them only when you need them. So if you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. And as I always mention, please make sure you subscribe, turn your bell notifications on and hit that like button for me. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.